Welcome back to Look the Trader and this time with Chris here. Could you please introduce yourself and your company? Hey Luke, nice to meet you. Uh, I'm Chris Timmons, I'm CEO of Pegasus Resources. We're a uranium focused exploration company uh, with uh, assets in the Utah and Athabasca Basin. Mm -hmm. And so could you just go into detail why any prospective uh, investor should be interested in your company? What makes you special? Why, why should I pick your company instead of any other uranium company in this sense? Sure. Uh, we think we got a great story here. Uh, I'm new to the company. I joined Pegasus Resources in February of 2023. So we have a new CEO, which is me. Um, I came into the company uh, really just to get these projects advanced. That's really what I was brought in to do. Uh, we mm -hmm. went activist on the company. Originally, the uh, I was an investor of the company back in 2020. And uh, when the, the management of the company was kind of lacking on follow through. Uh, we went activists and we asked the CEO to step down and I took the company over in February of 2023. So that's kind of how I ended up getting involved in the story. And uh, I think this is honestly a great opportunity for investors. Uh, you've got a turnaround story of a company that was kind of just not doing anything. They weren't active. They had great assets, like really great assets, but they weren't working them. So I came in in 23. And uh, we're here now and we're working these properties. So really what we uh, we have here is a great opportunity. It's a turnaround story uh, with today's news. Uh, we now have a historical drilling that we can follow up on and create a resource. And uh, based on our ground program we did in January and uh, the historical drilling we acquired in March for our Energy Sands project, we have a discovery down there as well. Um, we think there's a great project, uh, Energy Sands, and we got another great project with Jupiter. So we just think it's a great company for investors to kind of get involved mm -hmm. with. We're here to explore and find uranium pounds, and uh, we're going to do that. Mm -hmm. Before sort of delving into the latest news release, could you just uh, talk a little bit about your management and the share structure and perhaps as well how the uh, insider ownership is looking like there within the company? Sure. So we actually have uh, 2.4 million shares, 2.14 million shares outstanding right now. Uh, we have insider ownerships around 11 percent. Uh, and with insiders and large shareholders, it's closer to 30 percent. So we've got 11 percent of insiders, so management and stuff. And then another 19 percent of large shareholders, friends and family. So we've got a really great share structure here. It's very tight still at this stage. Uh, and we've got a great uh, group of investors here. Uh, we've built up a whole new uh, shareholder base, really, since I've come into the company. Uh, it's great. Uh, everyone loves what we're doing. Everyone involved is very supportive. So we think we've got an exciting story here and uh, we've got great shareholders. Mm -hmm. Could you perhaps explain the latest news release and what some of the hopes are with the land package? Uh, this is a very exciting project. So we picked up this Jupiter project. It's three kilometers north of our Energy Sands project. So we're all right in within the same area. Uh, this area is really great for infrastructure. There's roads, there's power, there's uh, three mills in the works for Utah. So getting ore processed is not going to be an issue in the future in this area. So uh, really, we just want to go up there and explore this property and get this resource brought into uh get these historical drill results brought into a resource. That's really what we're focused on here with the Jupiter project. Uh, this project has well over 100 holes drilled on it, very close spacing. So uh, putting this into a resource should be fairly straightforward. Uh, we are in the process right now of doing all the steps needed to locate the drill holes, get them ready to be put into models. And then we're going to take what we this information and put together a drill program. And we're going to go and do confirmation drilling on this project uh, with the intention of getting this first half million pound resource defined. And then we think there's more on the property. Uh, obviously, you can see in the news release, we uh, have resource bonus payments to the vendor that go up as mm -hmm. high as 2.5 million pounds. Uh, the vendor and our early indications are that that's a reasonable number. Obviously, we're going to have to get out there and drill this to really see if those numbers hold up, of course, with drilling. But uh, very encouraging. And uh, we think there is a path here to a multi 
million pound resource on the and Utah area, and uh, we're going to go out and find them. Mm -hmm. Do you perhaps ever plan to go past the exploration stage with this land package, or is is your company only particular to exploration itself and just staying in that lane, sort of? You know, uh, it's pretty early days to really make a decision on that. But with Utah being so friendly to mining, I could see us taking the path to production down the road. Uh, I think that's quite a few years out yet and very early stages for us to really, you know, talk about doing like how we're going to go about that and everything. But just with the fact that Utah is going to have the three mills up and running probably in the next five years, I think there's a real clear path here to that we could possibly take these things into production. Uh, we have the team that is able to do that. Uh, we have the connections to make mm -hmm. that happen. And honestly, hard rock mining is it's actually pretty low skilled. You don't need to have big fancy resource uh, modeling guys. You don't need to have all these high tech technology um, hires to really go and do this stuff it's it's straightforward mining and utah is very open to underground mining and possibly open pit mining so um, will we take this into production it's too early to say but we do see a path where that could be possible mm -hmm. and sort of asking you a little bit about the permits like uh, how is the permitting situation there and uh, your land is it on patent and land or is it blm or any other sort of uh perhaps institution. Sure. We're on BLM land, which is great. Uh, Utah is an agreement state too. So that means we only deal directly with the state. We don't have to deal with the federal government. So having the federal government removed from all the permitting and regulation side of things makes the process a lot click, click, uh, a lot quicker and cleaner. So mm -hmm. we, we do have a permit submitted right now with BLM in Utah. That is in the process. Uh, we are going to extend that permit to get Jupiter project added into it. Uh, with the project only being three kilometers to the north of us, we don't see a problem having Jupiter being included inside that drilling permit. So that's obviously what we're gonna be doing is getting that permit to include Jupiter. And we're gonna go out and try and drill this thing this mm -hmm. summer. Mm -hmm. And could you also give an overview of your other uranium assets um, and land packages that you have available? Sure. So we've got the two properties in Utah, of course, which we were talking about, Energy Sands and Jupiter. And then up in the Athabasca Basin, we've got our Pine Channel property, which is actually a fairly advanced project. Uh, it was drilled by Denison Mines back in the late 1970s and early 1980s. Uh, there was actually some 12 drill holes across the property, which did show mm -hmm. some anomalous uranium. Obviously, nothing that, you know, you define or, you know, we call a deposit, but we're seeing all the Pathfinder and indicators that there is something in the area. Uh, whether it falls on our property or not is still to be determined. Uh, we're going to go up to Pine Channel, though, and do a gravity survey this summer. And uh, then we'll kind of go from there is what we're going to do. Uh, honestly, I see Utah as being our main focus. So mm -hmm. with the Pine Channel property, we'll get this gravity survey done, and then we'll decide what we're going to do with it. So whether that's we continue to work it or we JV it off or some kind of, you know, option like that uh, is what we're going to look at doing something with it in the future. And mm -hmm. then we also have our Golden property, which is located in British Columbia. It's on the eastern side of the province up by Golden, B.C. This property is very prospective for copper, gold and silver. Uh, we've done a couple ground programs there. Uh, we're not sure if we're going to do any work on it this summer, but next summer we're definitely planning on getting up there and doing some more work. Uh, we think there's some great potential on this property. Uh, we just need to advance it a little farther, and then we'll look to probably spin this property out or joint venture it off as well. But really, we just want to get Utah up and running, and then we'll decide what we're going to do with our Pine Channel and our Golden property. Mm -hmm. And... In looking now into the future, um, how much money would you need to raise perhaps? And how is it looking like with potential dilution as you're sort of progressing uh, and defining more and more of these resources in Utah, for example? Sure. Yeah. Anytime you're working with a junior explorer, dilution is only something you got to keep in mind. Uh, we've been doing fairly well as far as dilution goes. Uh, we did do a share rollback in, in spring of 2023. 
of course, which has really helped our share structure out. Part of me coming in to take the company over was really just trying to repackage the whole company and make it as attractive as possible to all new investors. So a rollback was part of that. So that was part of what we've done to manage our share structure. And since then, we've done very well with, you know, doing a couple small raises, only raising enough capital to do the work we need and obviously to cover the GNA costs of the company. So we've done some two small raises and we're still only at 21.4 million shares outstanding right now. So uh, we, we will do a raise. Uh, we're looking to probably raise a million dollars just for the drilling side of things. I would love to get a million dollars in for drilling and go down there in Jupiter, take that million to find that resource, jump over to Energy Sands and drill some of that paleo channel out and see what kind of a discovery is really there. Like we know there's something there, we just don't know how big it is. So really we could go over to Energy Sands, do a small program to find that discovery. And of course do the big program up at Jupiter and define ourselves a resource. And that's really the goal for the Utahs. Go down there, define the Jupiter resource and uh, work on that discovery at uh, Energy Sands. And why did you choose sort of uranium to be sort of your flagship project? Is is it because of the attractiveness of the commodity or is there some sort of other factor in play? Uh, the commodity is very attractive. The Really what drew me to it is like, I'm an oil and gas guy. So I've been following the energy story for well over 20 years and I could see what was coming down the line right we're just the population's growing around the world the demand for electricity just keeps climbing at like really insane amounts mm -hmm. honestly but the ai coming in and electric vehicles and electric everything else that they're adding to the grid grid we're, we're we're heading into a real problem here with energy and we've got to solve this problem like very fast and i think nuclear is going to be a large part of the uh you know, base load energy that we're going to need. Obviously, nuclear takes a little time to get up and moving and running. But once it's done, you got something that it can run for well over 80 years generating power for you. So I really just love the whole nuclear story at the end of the day. And obviously, uranium, it's we don't have enough of it. That's really what it comes down to. We don't have enough uranium. So at Pegasus Resources, our goal is just to go out and find as many pounds of uranium as we can get them into our, under our umbrella. And when the time comes, monetize that and really just create some value for all our investors. So that's really why we love uranium. It's just energy demand is climbing mm -hmm. and uranium and nuclear energy are going to be one of the main items, you know, main fixes for all of this energy, lack, mm -hmm. lack of energy. <laughs> <laughs> and now for your Utah land package, specifically uranium in this case, can you just a little bit talk a little bit about those historical data points in terms of demineralization grade and ore and what, and just what you know about the property to sort of give an insight for prospective investors out there to find out if it is really something that they are interested in in this case. So right now we don't have a whole lot of drill data out into the public eye. We are going to work on getting that information out to the public as quick as possible. Uh, being historical data, of course, there's a lot of steps you got to go through to verify the data and, you know, make it so you can present it to the public and properly and not get yourself in trouble with the exchanges mm -hmm. and all that stuff and the regulators. But what we did have is some with the energy sands work that we put out, uh, the drilling we put out in August, the historical drilling we acquired, I should say, uh, we saw some great numbers. Uh, we had 3.14% uranium, which mm -hmm. even for Utah, that is extremely high grade. Like that's ultra high grade for down there. You know, in the basin, 1% is actually the average grade. But of course, everything above that is high grade. But down in Utah, if you're at 1%, you're already at high grade, period. And anything mm -hmm. above that is really encouraging numbers. So we've already seen some really good numbers come off the Energy Sands property. Uh, we are going to get the Jupiter stuff brought out into the market. But really, we, we, we're seeing off the historical data down there, we're seeing really we're comparable to everyone in the area, up in that area, as far as like the energy sand, uh, sorry, Western uranium off to the mm -hmm. east of us there. What we're seeing on our historical data is, is pretty similar to what they're seeing. So I think if investors were really trying to get an idea of what we're looking at, I would take a look at what Western Uranium's kind of done with their San Rafael project up in the area. And we should be fairly comparable to grades and all that stuff. Of course, mm -hmm. this is all speculation until we drill it. Mm -hmm. And as we're sort of at the end of our interview, is there anything that you want to perhaps remark or highlight about your company? 
just we Pegasus Resources, uh, we love uranium. Uh, we've got the great management team here to help develop this story. And we're just going to keep moving it forward. Uh, we think uranium is a 10 year story and we want to be part of finding all the pounds needed to uh, grow uh, the, you know, really to supply the energy the world needs.